Hello, I'm Brett Frumer. Like you, I'm always looking for new and better ways to create my photographs. Because my work depends on it, I need a camera that's reliable, durable, and highly capable. The Nikon F4, the choice of professional photographers everywhere. I use this F4 with confidence. It's the latest in a series of F cameras. The F4 features three metering systems six exposure modes, high-speed motor drive, precision autofocus, shutter speed to one eight thousandth of a second, and an array of features, options, and controls that open up a whole new world of picture-taking opportunities. Just as important, the Nikon F4 connects you to the entire Nikon system of photography. Thirty years of technical advances in lenses, camera backs, speed lights, accessories, and other Nikon equipment makes this the most comprehensive and capable professional camera system in the field today. I know you've chosen this camera because of its quality and versatility. So today, I'm going to show you all about your F4. I'll begin with the basic construction and handling, move on to features and controls, talk a little bit about lenses and accessories, and then make some test images using the advanced focus tracking, matrix metering, and the F4's other creative features. You'll learn many things about your F4 that will help you use it more fully and confidently. Finally, we'll go on location in San Diego, California. There, we'll make some test prints using the F4. Incidentally, it's a good idea to have your F4 with you during this edition of Nikon School. That way, you can follow along as we go. This video assumes that you understand the basics of SLR operation. If you don't, feel free to send for Nikon's Guide to SLR Photography. Also, remember that your best and most complete source of information is this printed instructional material that's included with your camera. I'll give you a few moments to get set up. Meanwhile, here are a few images I shot in San Diego. Let's begin with Nikon F4 construction and handling. The F4's advanced microelectronics and mechanical parts are encased in this aluminum alloy chassis. The basic construction with bridges and hollow wall design contribute to the F4's reputation for durability and shock resistance. Surrounding the body is a non-slip rubberized exterior that also serves as a shock absorber. This camera feels great. It also features a smooth, well-rounded body surface and contour dials engineered for ergonomic handling. These levers and dials have been designed to resist moisture and dust. I love to hold this camera. All this serves to create a secure and comfortable feeling between you and your camera. There are four shutter releases, meaning you can easily shoot horizontally using the release on the top of the camera, vertically using the release on the side, a third is on the back for cable release, and a fourth is for remote control. Inside the F4 is one of the largest computer systems ever built into a 35mm camera. 
13 integrated circuits and three 8-bit microcomputers work together to bring you the most advanced level of automatic operation ever. Driving the F4 are four coreless motors that enhance efficiency and improve performance. It's really fast. These motors offer quick response, high torque, and efficient operation in a compact size. Film advance, shutter control, rewind, and autofocus are each powered by individual motors, which also work together when needed. Also inside is the F4's unique shutter system. That's one of the reasons why I bought this camera. It has speeds from 30 seconds to 1 8,000th of a second and a 1 250th of a second flash sync. This is terrific for balanced fill flash. To ensure that there is virtually no chance of light leak, the F4 features a unique dual curtain system. This dual curtain shutter also allows a mirror lockup absent in many higher-end 35mm cameras. Four of the shutter blades are made with this special epoxy material, reinforced with carbon fiber. The other four are made with aluminum alloy. Working together, these blades provide consistently accurate exposures, even at their highest shutter speeds. Not only does a, a powerful braking system prevent shutter bounce, a tungsten shutter balancer overcomes shutter vibration in the critical 1 15th of a second to 1 1 25th of a second shooting. This is one of the things that makes for sharp pictures. The balancer rises as the shutter curtain operates. This anti-directional movement absorbs the vibrations. These features, along with the camera's ergonomic design, gives you much more confidence in shooting handheld pictures, even at slower shutter speeds. Bracing your camera against the wall or using a bean bag or other support is often enough to ensure a sharp, clear image. Incidentally, the F4 has been performance tested in temperatures ranging from 158 degrees to minus 32 degrees Fahrenheit, including extremes of dryness and humidity. This means you can use your F4 in almost any condition. The F4's viewfinder itself is remarkable. You see, the multimeter viewfinder, DP20, is the F4's standard viewfinder and houses two of your camera's exposure meters, center-weighted and matrix. The spot meter is located in your camera body. It offers a high eye point viewfinder and virtually 100% frame coverage, regardless of the lens or diopter you're using. A diopter adjustment knob enables you to adjust the viewfinder in case you're near or farsighted. An eyepiece shutter lever prevents light from entering the eyepiece during automatic exposure meter readings when your eye is not in the back of the camera. Diopter adjustment is important, so let's take a second to detail this procedure. It's not unusual to adjust the diopter even several times during the day when your eye becomes fatigued from the bright lights or shooting. Simply pull the knob and rotate it to either direction until the focused image appears sharp. Then push it back. A continuous range of minus three to plus one is possible. Incidentally, diopter adjustment is best obtained with a few simple motions. Trying to over fine tune the diopter is not necessary. The viewfinder itself is information rich. Metering system, shutter speed, AE lock, Aperture and exposure mode are clearly displayed. Exposure compensation indicator and value, a frame counter, and aperture direct readout are also visible. Focus indicator and flash ready light also appear. And an analog scale appears at the bottom of the viewfinder in the manual exposure mode. Now, let's move on to features and controls. The F4 accepts film speeds from ISO 25 to ISO 5000. With DX coded film, the corresponding ISO on your camera is automatically set. To set the film speed manually, simply set the dial to the film's ISO number. Manual settings will always override automatic DX settings and can be made from ISO 6 to ISO 6400. Every position is locked in one third EV stops. The F4 has four automatic film advance modes. 
These modes are controlled by the bezel that surrounds the shutter release. To set a film advance mode, press the release button and rotate the bezel. In the single frame or S mode, the camera takes one picture and advances the film to the next frame. This means your camera is always ready for the next shot. The single frame mode is suited for stationary subjects, portraits, and everyday shooting. In the continuous high speed or CH mode, the camera takes up to about six frames per second for as long as the shutter release is depressed. An entire rapid sequence can be captured by simply keeping your finger on the shutter release button. This mode is especially useful for sports or other fast action events. In the continuous low speed or CL mode, the camera takes up to about 3.3 frames per second. Often, this is all the time that's needed to recycle the fill flash. Continuous low speed advance is also used in focus tracking, which we'll explain later. When conditions require a minimum of operating noise, there is also the continuous silence setting. In this mode, the camera shoots with a minimum of operating noise at about one frame per second. This is a real advantage when quiet operation is important. In all continuous modes, actual frame speed depends on which battery pack you've chosen, standard or high speed, and of course shutter speed in use, battery type and its strength, and shooting conditions. The film advance selector can also be used to lock the camera. By setting the selector to L, the camera is completely shut down and the shutter release and film advance are turned off. However, all information that you've programmed into the camera is retained. Now, let's look at focusing. The F4 offers three focus modes. Each is set by rotating the focus mode selector switch marked CSM, located on the body next to the lens mount. Each of the F4 focus modes is best suited for different types of shooting. The manual focus, or M setting, is best used when you want to make the creative decision regarding focus. In bright or normal light, you can manual focus using the clear matte field of the focusing screen. In dim light to EV-1, you can use the electronic rangefinder to help you obtain sharp focus. To use the electronic rangefinder, simply position the focus brackets on the subject and lightly press the shutter release. Move the lens in the direction the arrow indicates, watch for the green in focus indicator, then fully depress the shutter release. If your subject is stationary, such as in product or architectural photography, manual focus is a good choice, but not your only choice. The other two focus settings are both autofocus selections. Nikon's advanced AM200 CCD sensor module with infrared filter, cordless motors, and the F4's microcomputers combine to provide an autofocus system of exceptional speed and accuracy. The result is high-speed focus response, focus detection in low light, as low as EV-1, and subject detection in low contrast scenes, or scenes with minute subject detail. Autofocus begins by light passing through the camera's lens and being reflected off the main and sub mirrors onto the AM200 autofocus module. Here, special filters and 200 high sensitivity CCD sensors are used to compare the electronic output of two line sensors. The sensitivity characteristics of the CCD sensors can quickly store sufficient brightness data, even in low contrast or dim scenes, to allow the system's 8-bit microcomputer to determine precise focus. The high torque and rotation speed of the autofocus cordless motor then adjusts the lens in a split second. The first autofocus mode is the single servo, or S mode. In this mode, the shutter cannot be released until the subject is in focus. So aim the focus brackets at your focus point and lightly depress the shutter release button. Once the subject is in focus and the shutter release button stays slightly depressed, the focus will remain locked right through the moment of exposure. This allows you the freedom to recompose your picture without losing focus, provided that your subject is not moving. As in manual focus, 
single servo autofocus allows you to recompose or adjust your photo composition as you like once focus has been obtained. In the second autofocus mode, continuous servo, or the C mode, the camera will focus as long as you keep the shutter release button lightly depressed. This mode is best suited for situations where the subject may change positions or move closer or farther from the camera. While the autofocus system may be constantly adjusting, the shutter release may be fully depressed at any time. However, remember that the system is focusing on whatever is between the two focus brackets. The Nikon F4 also features focus tracking. Now, focus tracking is Nikon's autofocus software that enables accurate autofocus of subjects that are moving towards or away from the camera at a constant speed. Normally, an autofocus camera simply detects the distance from the camera to the subject and moves the lens until focus is obtained. However, during the time the shutter release and shutter firing, the subject may have actually moved closer or farther away. The result can be an out-of-focus picture. With focus tracking, which operates only in the continuous low setting, focus is detected at least twice before the first exposure. The camera actually measures the difference between the first and second focus detections to determine the subject's speed. It then anticipates the position of the subject for the exposure, taking into account the brief time the mirror is up. To enable focus tracking, use continuous servo autofocus operation and set the film advance mode to the continuous low speed. Now, whenever subjects are moving rapidly, either towards or away from, as so frequently happens in sports, you know that you've gotten the picture. Remember, autofocus operations are only compatible with Nikkor AF lenses. Let's look at our metering options next. There are three extremely accurate light meters built into your F4. This allows for the versatility you demand from your equipment and eliminates the need to carry handheld meters. The F4's built-in meters are selected by rotating this switch on the side of the pentaprism housing. Using the spot meter allows you to expose for a small but significant highlight. The F4 spot meter is represented by a 5 mm diameter circle in the center of the viewfinder. This metering system is effective when precise measurement of a special portion of the subject is required or for advanced manual metering techniques. The spot meter is built into the F4's body and is available with any of the F4's interchangeable viewfinders. Choose center weighted metering when you want to base exposure on either auto or manual exposure control for a centrally located subject. Represented by a 12 millimeter circle, center weighted metering concentrates 60% of the meter sensitivity into this area. Center weighted metering is available with the standard DP20 viewfinder included with your F4 or the optional AE action finder DA20. Most importantly, there's matrix metering. You see, with matrix metering, the meter provides correct exposure for the main subject using automatically calculated exposure compensation. A pair of sensors divides the scene into five segments. The sensor on the left reads segments 2, 4, and 1. The sensor on the right reads segments 3, 5, and 1. Using computer control, the appropriate exposure computation method is then chosen. Low brightness weighted, high brightness weighted, average, or center segment. The result is a great exposure, even for off-centered subjects. The system also programs out extremes of lightness and darkness, just as you would if you were evaluating the scene. And if you switch to the vertical shooting position, the metering system automatically adjusts. Matrix metering means that optimum results can be obtained in complex lighting situations, such as side lit, back lit, harshly lit, and night landscapes. Matrix metering is the right metering choice for situations where lighting conditions are difficult or changing rapidly. Matrix metering is a major advance in Nikon multi-pattern metering and you'll want to use it to your best advantage. 
Matrix metering is so versatile and adaptable that you'll soon find it as your meter of choice for almost every shot you make. Now, let's turn to exposure modes. There are five exposure modes in all, offering the most complete and versatile exposure system. Each mode offers a different photographic result. To select your exposure mode, simply slide the lever to the desired mode. Depending on your choice, you may also have to set other functions, such as aperture or shutter speed, or both. For example, in the manual mode, both shutter and aperture must be set to achieve the effect you're looking for. Faster shutter speeds stop the action, while slower shutter speeds can be used to create motion effect or soft outlines. To obtain proper exposure, use the exposure meter in the viewfinder LCD. The analog display range is plus 2 to minus 2 in increments of 130 V. If the indicator lights are right of center, your photo will be underexposed. To obtain more normal exposure, you may need to reduce your shutter speed or open your f-stop, or a combination of both. If the indicator lights are to the left of center, your photo will be overexposed. Here, you'll need to increase your shutter speed or aperture setting or both. When only the indicator under the center line is visible, your exposure will be perfect. Again, it's important to note that each indicator light on the scale represents one-third of a stop, and the total scale is plus or minus two full stops. Shutter speeds available are four seconds to one eight thousandth of a second. In addition, the lens aperture ring may be continuously adjusted, as all intermediate f-stops are usable. This gives you total control of your exposure. The manual exposure mode has many appropriate uses, one of which we'll demonstrate in a few minutes. The second exposure mode we'll want to use is A, or aperture priority mode. You select the aperture while the camera selects the speed. With the F4, shutter speed is virtually stepless from 1 8,000 to 30 full seconds. Aperture priority operates with virtually all Nikkor lenses. When used with any optical system, such as a reflex lens, microscope, telescope, etc., the Nikon F4's microcomputer automatically selects the correct shutter speed. Aperture priority is helpful when depth of field is critical. At larger apertures, you can have a very narrow depth of field, or stop down and increase your depth of field. The viewfinder will show both your pre-selected aperture and the shutter speed the camera selected for you in one half EV steps. High or low warnings in the viewfinder indicate if you are under or overexposed. The shutter priority exposure mode lets you select the shutter speed manually, while the camera automatically sets the aperture. This allows you to create the effect of motion by selecting a slow shutter speed. To stop action, select the higher shutter speed. Take advantage of the F4's wide-ranging shutter speed control from 4 seconds to 1 8,000th of a second. Shutter speed and aperture are again displayed in the viewfinder. Shutter priority is available only with lenses having built-in CPUs such as AF Nikkors and the 500mm F4P. In shutter priority, you must set the lens to the smallest aperture setting. If you've forgotten, FEE -E will appear in your viewfinder to remind you. If a non-CPU lens is used, exposure is automatically shifted to aperture priority mode. The next two exposure modes, programmed auto and programmed auto exposure high speed, are the ideal choices to photograph fast-breaking action when there's no time to worry about camera settings. In either of these modes, the F4's built-in microcomputer selects both aperture and shutter speeds for optimum results. When used with matrix metering, the results can be outstanding exposures time after time. In the program, or P mode, the computer picks a predetermined exposure value of aperture and shutter speed, as shown on this chart. These values represent average shutter speeds and depths of field, 
that allow most subject matters to be in focus without blurring. However, in the high speed program, or PH mode, the microcomputer opts for faster shutter speeds. This mode helps avoid blurring and is best suited for shooting fast moving subjects or when using a telephoto lens. Remember that the program modes can be used only with lenses having built in CPUs. These include all Nikkor AF lenses and the Nikkor 500mm f4p. For other lenses, the exposure mode automatically sets to aperture priority. In all five exposure modes, the F4's viewfinder will indicate the camera's settings. Correct exposure, underexposure, and overexposure will be shown. You can then make adjustments like change film or use a speed light or a neutral density filter depending on the situation. Tied in with the concept of obtaining just the right exposure is exposure compensation. Exposure compensation is useful for unusual lighting situations or when you want to control exposure for high key or low key effects. You can compensate exposure with the F4 in five ways. By manually adjusting the film speed setting, using AE lock button, using the F4's automatic compensation dial, using matrix metering, and finally using fill flash to balance out or emphasize a particular part of your exposure. To manually adjust the film speed rating, use the film speed dial. The scale on the dial has numbered settings for speeds from ISO 6 to 6400. Two dots between each pair of ISO numbers stand for intermediate settings. Every position is locked in one-third EV steps. Adjusting the film speed up an EV creates a higher key effect. The second way to compensate exposure is the AE lock button. This function memorizes the metered exposure value of the scene. It's great for situations where you want to change composition while placing the exposure emphasis on a particular part of a picture. While exposure is locked, EL will appear in the viewfinder. Auto exposure and auto focus can be locked simultaneously by turning the AFL lever to the position marked with a red and white dot and pressing the AFL button. This facilitates unusual composition and creative exposures. The third method of compensating exposure is the exposure compensation dial. Using the exposure compensation dial, you can adjust exposure within a range of plus or minus two stops in one third EV increments. This allows you to continually modify your camera's operation by a predetermined amount. The result is your personal style or the exposure values that best match your particular needs. To set exposure compensation, slide the lock release and rotate the exposure compensation dial. The dial is graduated in one third stop increments. Minus one and minus two indicate one and two stops under exposure. Plus one and two indicate one and two stops over exposure. Exposure compensation also appears in your viewfinder so that you can set the value without removing your eye from the viewfinder. The fourth way to compensate your exposure is simply through the use of matrix metering. Matrix metering automatically compensates for differences in contrast and brightness and adjust your exposures accordingly. And finally, there's fill flash. With fill flash, harsh shadows are filled in with light from the flash, creating a more evenly exposed photo. This brings us to the subject of flash itself. But before moving on to this subject, let's discuss a few more operational features of the F4. First, Using the shutter speed dial, three other settings are possible. On the bulb setting, the shutter remains open as long as the shutter release is depressed, useful for long time exposure applications. On the T setting, the shutter stays open until the shutter speed dial is rotated to another setting. This is also ideal for creating long time exposures. And finally, the X setting which locks in a top flash sync speed of 1 250th of a second. 
This depth of field preview button allows you to examine the zone of sharpest focus prior to shooting. And a mirror lockup lever reduces vibration by locking the reflex viewing mirror in the up position. This is ideal when using super telephoto lenses or during long time exposure. There's also a multiple exposure lever that allows any number of multiple exposures on the same frame and a 10 second self timer that automatically activates autofocus and light meter operations. Self timers can be useful for the shutter release in long time exposures when you aren't using a cable release. Now let's talk about flash and the use of Nikon speed lights. Using any of Nikon's dedicated TTL controlled speed lights, the F4 automatically synchronizes the camera's shutter speed and lens aperture to provide precisely controlled exposures. This means you can perform sync flash in the TTL mode in every flash situation. The result is more natural looking exposures. Perhaps the F4's most powerful flash tool is matrix balance fill flash. Because photographic film cannot record detail in both very dark and very bright areas, Flash can be used indoors or out to fill in shadows and create a more evenly lit exposure. Balanced fill flash goes a step further. Basically, you expose for the background and add just the right amount of light to the foreground to balance the exposure. This avoids either silhouetting the subject matter or washing out the background. By changing the exposure for background or increasing or decreasing the intensity of the flash, you can balance your photo any way you like to create different effects. While the F4 allows you to achieve fill flash and balance fill flash manually, using automatic matrix balance fill flash is often a faster and more reliable option. With matrix balance fill flash, the exposure value for the background is automatically computed using the matrix metering system. Based on this reading, the F4 then chooses one of five flash output levels to provide light to the foreground. A pleasing combination of ambient light and flash illumination is then achieved automatically. The result is a natural looking photograph. Now remember, you can use matrix balance fill flash in any exposure mode. Nikon offers a wide range of electronic speed lights suited for different applications. With the SB24, you can not only perform matrix balance fill flash, but rear curtain sync and repeating flash. While taking advantage of the camera's automatic operation, you can even compensate flash in one-third EV increments to produce the kind of flash pictures that meet your specific requirements. Nikon speed lights SP23, SP22, and SP20 are also equipped with an infrared illuminator that allows you to focus even in total darkness. For multiple flash photography, speed lights can be linked using Nikon remote cords and adapters. A number of power sources are available, including a high-speed battery pack. If you shoot a lot of close-up or macro work, the SB21 speed light is designed specifically to work in close-up operations. If you'd like to learn more, we've produced a Nikon School video specifically on the SB24 and the F4, featuring my colleague Al Satterwhite. This video is available from Nikon and will help you understand the many opportunities that flash can bring to your photography. The F4 also offers a choice of camera backs. The multi-control back MF23 attaches in seconds and opens up a whole new world of picture taking opportunities. Key in a long time exposure up to 999 hours for very long exposures, you'll need a custom power supply. Remember, fresh AA alkaline batteries are good up to about four hours. Use the interval timer to produce a series of photos where you input the start time, interval between each picture, the number of pictures, or even the number of intervals. 
auto bracket for a range of exposures. Select compensation values from one-third to two EVs, gradually and automatically shifted from the metered value. Choose any odd number from three to 19 frames. Record a range of exposure effects at just the push of a button. And freeze focus. Simply set your focus, and when the subject comes into range, the shutter is automatically released. Capture one picture or a complete sequence of the kind of pictures you've never been able to make before. Study your pictures and record your efforts with data imprint. Enter your choice of date, time, frame number, serial upcount number, fixed number, shutter speed or aperture, or exposure compensation within or between the frames. The MF23 also offers an alarm that can be set to ring at the same time every day. A film alarm that sounds when a preset number of exposures has been reached. A film stop that locks the shutter at that point. A shutter speed, aperture, and frame counter. And even an imprint level adjustment. Now, the MF24 multi-control back is especially designed for sports or scientific and industrial applications. It allows uninterrupted shooting of up to 250 exposures without changing film. There's also the data back MF22, which simply imprints your pictures with the calendar or clock information. The Nikon F4 also offers an array of viewing, remote control, and close-up accessories, including the Nikon ML2 Modulite. The Modulite ML2 is a remote triggering device that allows you to fire either your camera or your Nikon speedlight from up to 300 feet away. ML2 offers a test light, single or continuous shooting, and a convenient three-second delay that allows you to hide the remote before the subject is exposed. The ML2 receiver also contains a slave and can trigger a remote flash. The F4 is the system designed for the professional photographer, and virtually any photographic situation can be covered with available Nikon equipment. Three interchangeable viewfinders are available for the F4. The DA20 action finder is perfect for situations where normal viewing is difficult or impossible, such as when wearing a helmet or goggles, or when the camera is encased in special housing for underwater photography. The DW21 six times high magnification finder is ideal for close-up work or photomicrography. And the DW20 waist level finder is useful for operating at a low angle or using a copy stand. In addition to the B-type bright view focusing screen provided with your camera, 12 other interchangeable screens are available to meet your needs from general photography to high magnification to architecture to aerial images, to viewing and focusing in dim light. Because two of the light metering systems are incorporated in the finder, it may be necessary to compensate the measured value when using certain interchangeable focusing screens. To adjust the compensation, remove the finder from the camera body and rotate the screw-like dial with the screwdriver provided with your camera. Compensation within a range of minus two to plus one half EV is available in half-stop increments. Nikon also offers a range of remote control accessories, including single and multiple camera remote cords, radio control set, cable releases, pistol grips, and connecting cords. There's also an intervalometer for unmanned time-lapse photography or work sampling. All these Nikon accessories make your system more versatile. But when it comes to versatility, one of the most important accessories is lenses. I can't stress this point enough, being a professional photographer. The F4 uses virtually all Nikon F-mount lenses, offering extraordinary creative opportunities. Since 1959, Nikon has produced hundreds of lenses that are compatible with your F4. Non-AI, modified AI, AI, AIS, Series E, F3AF autofocus, 
TC16A and all Nikkor lenses with built-in microcomputers, including today's autofocus Nikkors. Today's AF Nikkor lenses, available in a range from 20 to 600 millimeters, not only offer precision autofocus, but actually exchange information with your camera and flash, offering unmatched dedicated performance. Other Nikon lenses, available from 6 to 2,000 millimeters, can take you as wide or as tight as you want to go. Macro lenses can take you from infinity to one-to-one, -one, and with extension tubes or bellows even closer. PC, or perspective control lenses, help to straighten converging lines in architecture. All Nikon lenses have manually operated aperture controls, in addition to any automatic features. Nikon lenses also offer the most refined ability of any lens to accept intermediate f-stops, since they are not restricted to fixed increments. With all this versatility and capability, how do you put it all together? Well, before we go on location, let's look at a few real-life examples. The beauty of the F4 is that there are many ways to accomplish the same task. Each control or feature has a different effect on the photo. You choose the way you want to work. In this first example, we wanted to capture the strongly backlit portrait, concentrating on the eyes of the subject. We're using a 135 AFDC Nikkor to separate the subject from the background. We've set the film advance mode to S for single frame advance and set the autofocus mode to S for single servo autofocus. We've chosen single servo autofocus because by slightly depressing the shutter release, the camera will lock its focus on the subject so that we can recompose the portrait while maintaining a particular point of focus. Next, we're going to choose center weighted metering with auto exposure lock in order to compensate for any exposure effects from recomposition. Here, we're using the aperture priority mode and the SB24 speed light setting a minus 3 EV of flash compensation. This will provide a catch light for the subject's eyes and even out facial tones. This should maintain a very natural look to the photograph while maintaining its ambient light appearance. We could use the compensation dial to adjust the background exposure, but in this case we've decided to leave it alone. To check depth of field, we use the depth of field preview button. The result, the type of photograph that meets my personal goals of interesting composition, natural looking exposure, pleasing background, and fill flash improved subject matter. Let's look at another example. Here, we're in a quick changing situation with a subject moving directly towards us. Matrix metering and focus tracking will help us handle this scene. First, set the film advance to continuous low, or CL, to create a series of pictures. To compensate for rapidly changing light, choose matrix balance fill flash using the SB24 speed light. The meter will now constantly analyze and reanalyze the scene, determining the best balance between flash and ambient light automatically. In this light, the SB24 will have no trouble keeping up with the motor drive. In terms of exposure, set the camera to the P mode for programmed auto exposure. This way, the camera's computer will make all the necessary exposure changes. Now, Focus tracking, when it's automatically activated, will anticipate the position of the subject at the precise moment of exposure, also contributing to the sharp in-focus pictures. A final example is one in which the photographer used an intervalometer for time-lapsed work. In capturing this photograph, manual focus and program exposure modes were set to capture the feeling of the rising sun slowly illuminating the landscape. Nikon's quartz-controlled intervalometer, MT2, was used to fire the camera every 30 minutes for eight hours. In addition, an MF23 multi-control vac was used to provide three bracketed exposures during each firing interval. The result is a series of photos that captures the morning sun as it unfolds. We hope this gives you an orientation to your camera's incredible capabilities, but to really appreciate the F4, you 
you have to use it. So let's take the camera now and see how many more ways we can put the camera to work around the San Diego area. We just finished a fantastic shoot in San Diego, California. Using the F4, we've put it through its paces using some of the more important features. We started with Ultimate Disc, which is an incredible sport. You'll see there's a lot of action. From there, we did a portrait of a beautiful young girl playing a violin. And we contrasted that with our next scene, which was rollerblading in a very graphic setting. The next day, I wanted to do a rear curtain sink, so we used a runner. And uh, from there, we went and shot hang gliding. And um, from that, I wanted to use uh, the F4 in an aerial application because the imagery up, upstairs is pretty fantastic. And finally, we ended up with a very cool scene of these California surfers and uh, put the speed light to work. We're on this college campus, and I saw this sport they were playing called Ultimate Disc, where they take this disc and throw it to one another on two teams, much like soccer. It was really incredible to see these guys jump and get horizontal. And for me, shooting that sport in a different light was what I was after capturing. So I was able to arrange these guys to come and shoot for me on their practice day, where I could get them where they were getting horizontal, or I could get them where they were jumping over me. Things that people hadn't seen in this sport before because everybody really could shoot it only from the sideline. So I, so I envisioned this picture of these guys jumping for the disc, grabbing their facial expression, all frozen in a frame. It's a very difficult shot to get, but if you get it, it's magic. So I got it by setting up a tripod, using the F4 with a 300 millimeter lens, used focus tracking, and I timed the disc thrower and the catch at a certain spot so I could come and they would track and boom, you'd get the shot. It's a magic thing to get. Then I wanted to get the guys perpendicular to the camera when they were catching the disc at a horizontal, in this horizontal fashion, trying to capture that facial expression. So what I did was I set the camera onto autofocus, tracked with them, and the camera snaps in and grabbed that moment. I was in a tricky lighting situation because they were fast moving. Sometimes one would shadow another. The grass was different colors and different values. So I used matrix metering. I used the 300 millimeter to capture these very tight shots. One where the guy was coming at me with, with focus tracking and the other where they, where they were coming on the side so I could get these guys horizontal with continuous autofocus. Once I had captured these very tight shots, I wanted to show the sport in a totally different way. So I went to a 24 millimeter lens, laid on my back, and I wanted to see what the whole sport would look like as if I was a fly, something somebody would never see before. So we set up an F4 with a 24 millimeter lens and had the guys run straight over me, had a disc thrower, positioned the disc so it was right over my head, hoping to get two guys grasping at this right above me. I set the camera on shutter priority because I knew that I wanted to freeze the focus and I'd let Matrix choose the aperture. The whole thing showed the sport in a light I'd never seen. Once I had covered the sport with a long lens and a very wide lens, I went to the 80 to 200 ED lens and just covered the game in general fashion. The zoom offered me to capture in when the action was close or just spread out wide when the guys were downfield and just capture the whole ambiance of the sport. On my prep day, I was coming up with all these different kinds of shots that I wanted to do. And a lot of times when I work, I go out with an empty palette and I just go to a scene and I let it affect me. There's a clear example where this worked just beautifully. I was going up to the field to look at the ultimate disc players in action. And I saw this 10-year-old blonde girl carrying this violin case. What, what I wanted was a dark background with her face light and illuminated. So I set up the okay. F4 with the 80-200. 
I used spot metering because Matrix wouldn't have worked because it would have read too dark on the overall background, which makes the magic of this picture. I used a spot meter to measure the amount of light on her face, then focused on her face, locked them both, recomposed my picture, and went ahead and shot. The reason I used the zoom here is I knew there would be more than one picture. I knew I'd have the overall scene, and then I knew when I came in very close to her face that I could have a whole separate picture without disturbing her, without changing lenses. It, it just was a magic moment to listen to her play, to watch the light, and to have the camera work the way it worked in a situation that is normally extremely tricky. I've always been excited by rollerblading and I wanted to match all those colors to a really exciting location that had graphic designs and patterns and architecture. So I found the location, set up with these rollerbladers, put terrific hot clothing on them and had them run through the scene. Well, they were going, they were going very fast. I used the multifunction back and set it on focus priority. I used the F4 with the 300 millimeter lens to compress the scene, taking all these different graphic elements and smashing them together. I felt I already had one scene with these guys in a very interesting situation. The light was coming in, action-packed imagery. Now I wanted to get a situation where that was totally different. I found a great environment where it was very simple. The road and the sky. It was a two-element scene. I set the camera on continuous autofocus and I started them at the very way back and I had them come straight ahead. The woman came straight to the camera so that, so that the 300 millimeter and the F4 were able to focus track. And I had the other two guys zig back and forth, which made a really interesting picture. I liked the scene because in the very beginning, the rollerbladers were relatively small and the environment was very big. And then when I finished with the scene, the rollerbladers were paramount in the scene and the environment was very insignificant. It was really interesting because I had two colors to work with and then these rollerbladers just popping out of nowhere. I wanted to create an image where I could capture the energy of running. Not jogging, I mean running. The intensity of a runner. So I, I approached this shot with wanting to make a blur out of the background and capturing what was on the runner's face, the determination of her run. So I found this great runner named Angela and we set up a scene where the trees were heavily backlit. I knew I wanted a heavy backlit, spotty situation where I could use the speed light and the F4 on rear curtain sync to blur the background while keeping my runner sharp. We set up, which was kind of interesting, a makeshift dolly so that I could run with her. I had Angela run fast and then slow, fast and then slow each time I made an exposure. That allowed me to take the F4 with a 24 millimeter lens and sweep the scene following Angela so that I could keep her sharp but blur that, act, that background which would give me that sense of thrust and energy that I wanted to capture in my image. Driving around San Diego, you can't help but see hang gliders everywhere along the coastline. The wind comes offshore, flips up, and these birds are all over the place. It, it's very colorful. And from that, I wanted to capture the freedom of flight. This was a very difficult situation because I had one shot at it. It's about two minutes of flight, particularly on a tandem flight. On the first glider, we said I wanted the feeling of openness. So we rigged the F4 on the very back, on the tail of the glider with a 16 millimeter lens and a modulite. With that, I used the speed light to capture matrix balance fill flash because most of the scenes that I wanted were heavily backlit. 
so the speed light would fill in very nicely, and I let the matrix figure out exactly how much light to produce to make it balanced. Here's a difficult situation because I'm not up there to control it. Set the multifunction control back, set up the speed light, hold on to everything, tape it down, and let the glider go off. second glider it was a tandem glider and I knew we would be descending at a much quicker rate because of the weight. There I wanted to capture me flying with this, with this pilot who is very well experienced. We set up the F4 with the modulite and a 24 millimeter lens along with the speed light to again matrix balance fill flash and we took off. I carried an F4 with me with a 35 to 70 to see if I could capture a very close shot of the pilot and what he saw. It was an interesting experience because I had a lot on my hands to think about in capturing my shot and in no time at all we were on the ground. It was once in a lifetime opportunity and it was something that I depended on my cameras to capture this shot. Aerials are, are, are so different because you see a perspective that is not normally seen. I wanted to do a shot from a helicopter out in the ocean with some sailboats. For this, I had a particular shot in mind of being on top of the mast, looking down onto the sailboat in a backlit situation. Here's a great opportunity to get a whole range of shots. Light, medium, dark, they all would work. I'm not, I wasn't exactly sure with them, with the reflections off the water, the intensity of the sails, exactly what kind of density I wanted. So I used the multifunction back on a five frame bracketing sequence, bracketing half stops. Used the, the film advanced mode on CL so when I shot the first picture I knew I got five images that gave me the full bracket. I knew I had that scene, which offered me an opportunity to shoot a horizontal five shots quickly do a vertical and then change it up. I use the 80 to 200 to get a wide expanse to see the shadow of the sail. Each time I fired the shutter I knew I got that whole sequence. In all the photography that I do, I want to take each picture to the limit. I had this idea to do this quintessential California scene, the ultimate. And for that, you always think of surfers and blondes. I envisioned the scene where the sun was setting, the whole story behind the pictures where these surfers were coming out of the water, getting ready to get in their car, of course a Woody, and this this beautiful model in a bathing suit and the guys reacting to her hot color suit, her beautiful hair, and the whole feeling of what it's like to be on a California seashore. I was really excited about the scene because I had a great opportunity to work with two sets of subjects in a different way. I had my surfers and the woody silhouetted in a very graphic way by positioning each surfer going in profile and their boards going in different designs. Using the speed light, I could illuminate the model so that she would pop forward. Between the two, the dynamics were really interesting. I balanced the two using matrix balance fill flash. 
I think the shot's great. I, I really love what it captures. To me, it's the quintessential California scene. The F4, the choice of professional photographers everywhere. We hope you've enjoyed this edition of Nikon School and our photo adventure around San Diego. With the F4, your own adventure is just beginning. Highly versatile and capable, this is the camera designed for professional photographers. For Nikon, I'm Brett Frumer. Thanks for watching. <laughs>